happy Thanksgiving. About to go get some dinner and lunch with family for Thanksgiving, but first, let's go run out some energy with these kids. Come on. Like I said earlier, it is Thanksgiving, and we decided to, well, go to the park and have a little bit of family time before the festivities start. And also because Charlie is running around like a madman, and we can't take his absurd level of energy anymore. So we're gonna go let him run it out for a while and hopefully nap. But like I said, it's Thanksgiving. So let's talk about what we're thankful for. First thing I'm thankful for is Henry chose to wear a Detroit Lions shirt today, <laughs> or his jersey, because I'm a Lions fan. We were eight and two, and they play today. And I made Henry say, restore the roar, and it was the most adorable thing ever. He has a little bit of a speech thing, so it was, retire the roar. <laughs> made me happy. Other thing I'm thankful for is we're working, we're alive. You can't really ask for more than that. And I'm thankful that our kids are happy and healthy. Henry got his glasses on and everything now. He can actually see. And last night, he impressed the crap out of both of us with his reading skills. What was it that he read that we both looked at each other? Uh, it was something on the Minecraft commercial. There was a big word in there that I was totally expecting him to trip on. I was ready to help him through it. And he just he's had trouble with uh, Fend. Defend. No, just Fend. Because it's Fend something adventures. He's like, I'm all, what does it end with? D, 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 Fend. I was like, oh, okay, got it. And then everything else was smooth sailing. What about you, hon? What are you thankful for this year? I have just family and mm -hmm. a roof over our heads. <laughs> a nice roof now. Yes. Because <laughs> if you haven't been watching our videos, we have just moved into our new home. And so far, so good. Except, you know, Charlie feels like he should destroy everything. Other things I'm thankful for is just taking the times out to reassess and evaluate that life is okay. So unfortunately, my head gets in the way sometimes and I haven't been too happy the last few days. But today we get to hang out with the family. We've only had to yell at the children very minimally. So it's been a uh, not so bad day so far. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna finish playing up here at the park and head back to the house here pretty soon. Next stop is your family's house for Thanksgiving. You made some pies. I made pies. I do have to say the views in our new little home area are spectacular. You cannot really beat this. Mountains surrounding us on all sides. No big buildings in the way, which I do kind of miss having my buildings all around and everything, but can't really complain. I mean, you can actually see the planes in the sky and everything. It's kind of nuts. So one thing I want to talk about too is, one thing I'm thankful for is, we're at a point in our lives where, I don't know, it's just, uh, we really want for nothing and I really appreciate that. And that's really due to both of our hard work. So I'm thankful for the fact that we were both able to go to school, finish, get jobs that we both enjoy doing. And just, our kids are happy, they're in school, they're healthy, life is good. <laughs> and one of the things we're thinking about changing recently with life is possibly adding another electric vehicle to the mix. Because guys, I don't have the Tesla anymore. I know, shocking. But I gave it up for a better cause. And that's my wife, she drives it now. <laughs> no, we didn't get rid of it. She just basically has taken over the car. She told me that she doesn't really like driving the bigger car, which I completely get. She's used to driving smaller cars like her old Kia Forte and what have you. So it just actually made sense for her to drive it more. But then I started doing Henry, the math, and too because far. of that $7,500 tax credit that's good to the end of the year, it actually might make sense for me to finally make the leap into the Model Y like we originally wanted. But the question is cost and price. So the Model Y has come down. During the actual COVID lockdown periods, you were looking at starting prices between sixty dollars and $63,000. Now they're down to, for the long range model, about forty eight dollars or forty three dollars for the standard range model. Which, to be honest, standard range model would be perfectly fine, although I would like the longer range for our road trips. With that $7,500 tax credit, we're now talking dropping it down to in the 30s. But with the interest rates being as high as they are right now, because right now I'm boasting a 2% interest rate on my current car from when I bought it back in 2020, it's now about six and a half, or even my bank, who I've always gotten good rates with before, wants 7%. So I make my monthly payments something that's somewhat astronomical. In order to do this, we'd also have to trade in our Explorer. The Explorer right now, we owe about 13,000 on it, and the trade-in value is right around between nine and 11. So either way, we'd be in the hole for it, which I don't like losing money like that. So the question is, do we do it? I don't know. But the reason I bring this up right now, since we're talking about what we're thankful for, I'm thankful this is actually like an issue or problem that we have. So okay. this means life's okay right now. This is a total first world problem and I'm fully aware of it. But do we go fully electric or do we keep one gas I'll help car you. Down? So one thing I was talking about while I was walking around to the camera, you know, my imaginary friend. Um, I'm still toying with the idea of we should include a Model 3 into our repertoire of electric cars. And by the repertoire, I mean a second one. 
So, now that you got you in the car with me, and I've thought about it more aloud, okay. let me run some ideas by you, and we'll see what you think, okay. and what the people think of what we think. <laughs> so, prices have gone down. When we first looked at the Model 3, or sorry, Model 3, the Model Y, this was during peak COVID time, and they were right around $63,000 for the That's base so model. Much. I know. And now they've come down in price and they're back to about $43,000, which is what I paid for the Model 3 initially when we okay. bought it. Um, here's my issue. Interest rates have gone up because yeah. for the Model 3, we are at a 2% interest rate and the cheapest I've seen so far that's offering is around six. So in, in our bank, who I've had good interest rates with in the past, is saying seven. Jeez. I know. I know. The other part that's holding me back is, in order to do this and make it make sense, we probably want to trade in the Explorer at that point. Right. But right now, the Explorer, when we bought it, it was in the middle of COVID, but we needed a bigger car. Right. And considering what we paid for it and our trading value and everything else, I think we got a pretty good deal at the time. Yeah. Now, the Kelly Blue Book value for private party is eleven to 13000 When we bought it, Kelly Blue Book was twenty three to twenty four. Right. Which was a year ago. <laughs> um, and trading values between nine and eleven, and we owe thirteen. So if we were to do it even at the eleven, we're still taking a two thousand dollar bath on it. Okay. But if we get the car before the end of the year, we still get that seventy five hundred dollar tax credit for this upcoming tax season, which would make our car payments essentially double what they are now. But as we've talked about, if we do this, one of the things we talked about was just paying off what we owe on our Model Three which would make our monthly car payment cheaper than what we're paying for both cars right now. Okay. But I don't know, what do you think? Because my big thing is, and we watched a video today by Andy Sly, who is one of the people I watched to like learn more about Teslas when I was thinking about getting one. He pointed out the fact that he has spent a little over $4,000 in total charging costs in the five years he's owned his car. Right. And if you compare that to the gas prices at $3 a gallon, which here in Tucson, they run between $3.40 and $4 at the time of this video. Um, the math breaks down to over that same five year span, that would have been about $15,000 in gas prices. So yes, we are paying more upfront and monthly for the car, but we're paying infinitely less for gas. A uh, perfect example is I have filled up the Explorer three times in the last two and a half weeks. Yeah. And it's about 50 bucks a pop, even with our discounts that we get for gas. Yeah. What do you think? Would you want to explore getting a Model Y? I think... <laughs> I'm definitely more comfortable at this point if, with an electric car than I was when we, before we bought the car. Oh yeah, you were definitely not a... Um, it, it's just the cost-wise. And the way I look at it too, even like until we get our actual like budgets and everything figured out, right? we could also subsidize the cost from like our savings, for example. <laughs> like pay the difference out of that until we actually have our new budget down. I don't know. I kind of do and I kind of don't because my here's my pros and cons. The pro is you definitely like driving the Model 3 better than the Explorer. Yes. Am I wrong? No. Because I, uh, I did a total like clickbait thing so far in this video, which I was like, guys, I no longer have the Model 3. <laughs> my wife does. <laughs> um, so you definitely prefer driving that. And I actually really like the Explorer. I just, you know, the whole point of me getting this was I wanted to invest in what I think the future is, which is electric. Right. Um, my other, my con is the fact that charging, basically we're going to have to spend every other night charging your car. Yeah. Because we can't charge at the same times, obviously. Right. And do we want to spend the extra money in buying a long range car or do we want to go with another standard range like this one? Because standard range is treated as well so far. No. Um, yes, when we go on road trips, it takes a little bit longer to charge. But I don't mind it. I don't mind it either. That's the thing. Like, we can get out and stretch our legs. The kids can go out. Right. Like, our six and a half hour trip to Disneyland is now seven. Yeah. You know? Hmm. And another thing I'm thankful for is because of this channel and what we do. I actually get to plan certain things and justify them with you because, oh, it's for the video. <laughs> like, for this coming year, as of right now, we're anticipating going to Oregon. Yep. We're anticipating going to Disneyland, I'm sure. Probably. Again. 
And a big thing for me is I'm really anticipating going to WonderCon. And for those of you that don't know, WonderCon is actually an offshoot of San Diego Comic-Con. They're owned by the same company now. It's a, the second biggest comic convention outside of like New York, LA, and like San Diego, like that type one. So I'm looking at going to WonderCon, so I gotta keep my eye out for those tickets. And it just so happens to be across the street from Disneyland. So <laughs> we had talked about not renewing our annual passes for Disney because we didn't really see ourselves going that much this year. I think we both really enjoy having it and it's something that brings us happiness when we do go. I don't really see an issue in renewing them. Unless we don't go at all this year and then that was a complete waste of money. <laughs> but if we renew it, we'll make a plan to go. I think we'll feel financially obligated since we already made the investment. And then also WonderCon in Anaheim because it's a comic book convention that I'm looking forward to. Because I'm at a point where I don't collect individual comic books anymore, like series. I'm not really reading a lot of the newer stuff. I'm actually investing in classic books that I've always loved and dreamed of, my grills, that I get to pass down to our kids one day. Okay, well, anything else you're thankful for this year? I know you said family. I know you said a roof over our head. What else are you thankful for? Hey, Charlie, what are you thankful for? You're thankful for Mama? Yeah. That's a good thing to be thankful for. Can we get me? Henry. What are you thankful for? For my Legos. For your Legos? Yeah. That makes me feel great. All right. <laughs> well, all in all, it's been a good year, and I'm really happy that we have so much to be thankful for and celebrate this year. It's never been, it hasn't been easy for you times, whether it was health concerns or people acting up in school. <laughs> and just the normal rigors of life. That being said, we're thankful, and we're also thankful for you guys watching our videos. There's not a whole lot of you at this point, but it's something we truly enjoy, because one thing I know that keeps me going on straight forward is my artistic outlets, and right now, this is my main one. I love making the videos, I love editing them, I love shooting them, even if they're not probably the most well-polished videos you've seen online. And our loud children, I'm thankful for them, sometimes. I'm thankful for them up until like eight o'clock at night, and then I just wanna sleep. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for taking another ride with us. Let's take another ride again soon. Bye-bye, everybody.